What's up, boys? Tricks Ridiculous back with another video, and today we're going to be looking at a ranged Thor build. This is a pure ranged Thor build. Now, I know what you're thinking. That can't work. There's no way, but I assure you it can, and it's very, very legitimate. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, I like to craft and show off fun and unique builds that are a bit out of the ordinary, but are still very powerful. So if you like Marvel's Avengers and you want to see more content, be sure to like and subscribe. Now, I'll start off by saying saying that the build is not a single target damage machine. You know, I know there's been a lot of Thor kind of clips lately and builds going around. Uh, I don't have a clip to show you where I stack like seven different damage buffs to get like a five second window where I can melt Taskmaster or Abomination. I think that's really cool, but I don't think it's super sustainable to rely solely on something like that uh, for as a build for all content. Um, and also, if your Thor is already built like that, the build I'm about to show you here is really not good gear intensive at all so it'll be easy for you to keep a separate loadout in your back pocket to be able to uh, switch to this build when you want to so I'll start off uh, with a skills overview and then move on to gear and finally end off with a little bit of gameplay showcase right at the end I really hope you guys enjoy this and if you have any questions leave them in the comments below I'll be sure to answer every comment below but without further ado let's get right into it all right, boys, so here we are with the skill tree for Thor. Now I'm going to go over the specialty skill tree first. Go ahead and take a screenshot now if you'd like. And then here is the mastery skill tree. Go ahead and take a screenshot. So there's kind of a lot going on with this build. So I'm kind of just going to do this a little off the cuff and just kind of talk through some of the different points here. But if you have any questions, definitely leave them down in the comments. Um, so starting off with the support heroic ability, we're going to be going with Ymir's Wrath uh, to give nearby teammates a damage uh, boost of 25%. Um, really just great to have a little bit of extra support there. The other two perks aren't super relevant. Uh, the willpower recovery is really not much at all and then the uh, reviving a teammate is not super necessary you can easily just do that uh, while you have this active uh, and then on the right side we're going to be going with hell's anger so increase attack damage uh, by 25 excuse me critical attack damage by 25 percent and critical attack chance by 10 percent for anyone affected this is huge uh, this is a really really big buff the 10 percent chance is absolutely enormous uh some of these other perks are okay asgard's fortune's okay but it doesn't really proc doesn't seem like 50 percent to me so i ditch it in favor of the hell's anger uh, now for the assault heroic ability we're going to be going with son of the elder gods uh the whirlwind blast uh does 20 percent more damage and applies cryo uh, vortexes uh to all the enemies that are caught in it so what this does is you know when you use your assault heroic it kind of pulls everyone up in those uh, tornadoes doing cryo damage to them and then the actual blast itself does 20 more damage um excuse me, 20% more damage. Now, it's uh, important, a little trick to note with this is you definitely want to hold down your Assault Heroic when you activate this. Um, some of you probably already know this, but if you don't, uh, just hold it down. What it does is that tornado will actually kind of keep going for a good couple of seconds if you just click on your assault heroic it's going to pull everyone up in the tornado and then it's going to immediately blast them but if you hold it down it's going to keep them suspended for a little bit longer give your team a little more opportunity to deal some damage while also dealing a little more cryo damage yourself uh, before finally hitting them with that blast and on the right hand side we use overcharge blast 20 percent more damage while overcharged i'll show you why this is important in a second um, I, I avoid these other ones the shock damage I, that doesn't seem really good to me to have to get an enemy shocked first and then this bottom one rolling thunder is actually bugged it doesn't work if it did work it would be cool um, but right now you can kill a hundred enemies with uh, this ability and get none of your assault heroic back so don't use this one so coming over to the ultimate heroic, so we're going to be using Muspelheim's Torment. Now, I was a little torn uh, between uh, Jotunheim's Tempest, the cryo status effect, um, and the Muspelheim's. The reason we're going to be using the Muspelheim's uh, the burn damage, while it's actually not a lot of damage, you'll notice in some gameplay clips, when the enemies are burning with that burn damage, it really is like minuscule, like, like honestly, like double digit. Like you'll, they'll be burning, the ticks will be like, 80 damage which is obviously nothing right so it's not really the damage from the burn that we're looking for but what it does is it applies a full plasma 
elemental effect, right? So they're going to be under that elemental burn damage. And the reason that's good is we're going to kind of go off of that right into our God Blast, which does cryo damage. So cryo and plasma are opposing damage elements. So while someone is under the element of plasma, they're going to take uh, extra cryo damage. I believe it's double cryo damage. Um, so it all kind of plays together. Uh, they're going to be kind of burning and then the ticks from the cryo damage are going to be very, very good uh, damage ticks uh, while you're holding it down. So you'll see that in the gameplay as well. And then just to add to the synergy, we're going to be using Odin's Blessing of the Realm. So when you use the Odin, uh, excuse me, the Bifrost, you come back with full Odin Force overcharge. So you're going to be coming back with that in that overcharge state. And again, we're going to go Bifrost right into the Assault Heroic. And of course, we have Overcharge Blast. So we're going to be doing 20% more damage while Overcharge. So having these four abilities between your Bifrost and your Assault Heroic is going to be absolutely money. Um, Thor, in my opinion, has the best suite of kind of heroic abilities across all three um, and using them in combination like I said earlier this is not a single target damage build by any stretch but you know naturally we're going to be having a higher heroic rating we're going to be specking very very high into valor um, so using these in combination uh, will absolutely decimate uh, it works absolutely perfect you go by frost do the burn damage get your overcharge and then hold down your assault heroic ability while overcharged do a ton of cryo damage to everybody and then finish off with a god blast uh, that does extra damage because you're overcharged it's going to absolutely blow away uh, pretty much all exos adaptoids anything of the like i mean you, you go bang bang one and two and it's going to absolutely blow them away you'll see in the gameplay as well um so that's really it for the kind of heroics um again you know we we are going pretty high into valor just because these are so good and you'll see in just a second when i kind of go over the gear and some of the different perks why valor is also very uh useful for our ranged damage as well obviously precision is something we want to go for but you'd be pleasantly surprised to see how well valor actually works with our precision uh, and our range damage uh, so with that said I'm gonna go over the mastery tree and then we'll look at gear as well all right boys so here is the mastery tree so I'm just gonna kind of go through these uh, they kind of you know for this build they kind of select themselves here but I'll just go from left to right first one range damage increase all range damage by 15% that one's a no-brainer uh, critical juggler this one's interesting uh, this really does only apply to melee we very rarely use our melee if we do anything with melee it's our signature attack so uh, we literally never get to combo finishers and we are never using unarmed attacks so this one we're probably not going to get too much use out of but for us it's probably the best in the, the tree um, heroic takedown mastery I shouldn't have to explain this one everyone should be using this on every hero perform uh, takedown get a heroic orb that works absolutely fantastic obviously because we're going to be using Thor's heroics so frequently uh, coming over to range I use critical throw now the these are all pretty good manual targeting I'm not super fond of uh, but this impact explosion can actually be pretty good if you use it properly the reason I go with critical throw uh, so basically when you're holding down your power attack once the hammer flashes uh, kind of that perfect timing it actually guarantees a critical hit it doesn't say that, but it guarantees a critical hit and inflicts 20% increased crit damage. Um, so you're going to be able to get really good kind of single target damage through your crits using this. We don't really use our ranged power attack too often. We're mostly using our ranged light attack, but for bosses, um, you know, and kind of larger enemies, uh, using the power attack specifically with critical throw can be very valuable. Uh, so critical return, this one is really, really, really good. This is really why the build works so well. It increases the chance the hammer will perform a crit on the return flight. So when you recall it by 35%, that's an enormous boost to your crit chance. Basically, every time your hammer comes back, it's going to be doing a crit. And 
with some of the gear we're using, which you'll see in just a second, that's going to be extremely, extremely powerful. Um, it's really the reason why we're able to do so much damage from ranged. Now, I've tried high velocity. This one is, you know, it feels really good to use, um, but you do notice that the damage does drop off. Having that extra crit on the comeback is really a bit more useful than just the speed itself. Um, so you'll see why in just a second when we go over the gear. Um, and then coming to this third one, this one's pretty useless. Um, I use the speed burst. It's a little useful sometimes, but honestly, the rest of these are pretty useless. Discharge flight sounds good, but we're not a melee build, so we're not going into crowds like that. And in my experience, I found this to be pretty buggy. Sometimes Thor kind of just crashes into nothing in the air. Um, so I really just had a bad time with this ability. But if it works for you, feel free to use it. Um, I personally would not. Um, and this other one here, you shoot out the lightning bolts. It doesn't really do anything. Um, and we're not really, you know, getting that close to enemies that we want to be doing that. For our intrinsics, I use Ionic Bolts, so defeating enemies while Odin Force uh, strikes nearby enemies with lightning. This can be pretty good. This does also work if you defeat enemies with Odin Force with ranged abilities. So if you are overcharged and you throw your hammer into a crowd, you strike a guy, he dies, everyone around him is going to get hit with lightning. So nice little crowd control effect there. Um, some of the other ones are really not that good. Force of Will, you know. 1.2% willpower per hit, not really super useful for us. Um, and then generating regen packs, not super useful either. Um, I use takedown charge mostly just because I've been playing this build solo. Um, so obviously as a solo player, you get all of the takedowns. Definitely take this if you're solo. Um, if not, you could also just use maximum force. This one works really well as well. Just gives you kind of an increased boost in that intrinsic uh Odin Force. You don't super need it, uh, but it can be a little useful uh, for sustained fights. Uh, but if you are playing solo and you're the one doing all the takedowns, just go for takedown charge. It'll help you build your overcharge a little faster. Um, and then I use Hone Force, so reduces the overall cost of using uh, Odin Charge by Odin Force by 10%. We do use our Odin Force pretty regularly. You'll see in the gameplay when you throw the hammer out, you want to kind of get that lightning burst. Uh, when you throw it out, you then you kind of retap the the Odin Force, the right uh, R2 button. That's going to give you kind of that lightning that strikes everything around you. So sometimes, you know, when you throw it into a crowd, you're going to want to use that one or two times before pulling your hammer back. So that does cost energy, so make it cost a little less here. Um, for the overcharge abilities, I use Lightning Field. Um, there's really no good perk in here. We don't really use, you know, power attacks too, too much. Um, and then the Explosive defense. This is not really relevant for us. The energy, the lightning field is pretty good if enemies try to sneak up behind us uh, while we're overcharged. This will kind of uh, give them a little lightning uh, so they don't take us out of our overcharge. Um, I use charge resistance. So while you're overcharged, you get 50% damage resistance. Obviously, we're trying not to get hit while overcharged, but you know, you know how overcharge can be on any character. Uh, it's really easy to come out of it. Uh, just by enemies tapping you once um, this is just useful you know because you get you do get a little more aggressive when you're overcharged um, if you know some adaptoids or whatever else start doing these wacky unblockable attacks um, you're just not going to get absolutely popped uh, you could also use willpower recovery kind of for the same reason um, I avoid the charged heroic even though our heroics are you know really uh, good and we want to be getting them back quickly this skill just doesn't do enough it's just it's so unnoticeable like 10 percent just for the short you know 10 seconds or however long that we stay overcharged is absolutely minuscule it really doesn't recharge anything at all so that's why i avoid it and then I use Damage Force, obviously increase all damage by 15% when Odin Force is active. This one's fantastic. Works all really well, uh, again, with our 
uh, combo of the Bifrost right into the God Blast. Uh, we're going to be overcharged coming right out of the Bifrost, so our God Blast is going to do an extra 15% on top of the already 20%, and on top of already the Cryo damage, which is already being buffed by them burning from the Bifrost. So, uh, like, stacking up all that damage, you're going to absolutely blow away all these different things. Um, these other abilities aren't super relevant, um, so really just go with the pure damage. You're going to be happy with this one. So that's it with the Mastery Tree. Uh, again, it's pretty straightforward for a ranged build, um, but you'll see why some of these pieces like the critical return um, are really valuable when we go over the gear. So we'll get to that right now. All right, boys. So here is my current gear for Thor. Now, I'm just going to kind of talk through this. I don't really have a script for this, so I'm just going to do it a little off the cuff. Uh, but really, the only piece of mandatory gear you need here is right here, the grip of the All-Father. Uh, this is what really makes this build work I, without this piece of gear i would 100 percent say that ranged thor does not even make sense it wouldn't work but with this piece it does work so if you look at this uh, perks here mjolnir's sight that's the one so greatly increase mjolnir's ability to find targets and hit them on any return flight this is really just absolutely insane you'll see in the gameplay this is why the build works normally when you throw a hammer with thor you bring the hammer back it just hits whatever is kind of in the path back it's not very reliable it really doesn't do anything this perk is absolutely out of control bonko schmanko it literally makes mjolnir go so out of its way to hit targets on the way back it's ridiculous you can hit up to like five different targets on the way back coming back from your first throw so if you throw it into a crowd you're going to hit some people on the way forward you bring it back it's going to ricochet like captain america's shield across so many different guys before finally coming back to you and then you just go ahead and toss it out again and combine that with the skill we were just talking about the critical return that's going to increase the crit chance of the comeback by 35 percent so so we're going to be knocking dudes all around, basically like a steamroller from Captain America, uh, but every single one of those hits is going to have that extra 35% crit chance. Um, so it's absolutely ridiculous, and that's why we really don't have to spec too, too much precision. Of course, precision is a very important stat, but Valor is really the big one because it but Valor not only affects your heroic effectiveness, which is going to affect the damage of our Bifrost and God Blast, but also it affects our critical damage. So if you look here, I've got 239% crit critical damage. Um, my crits absolutely destroy people, uh, and it's really stacking with that Valor. So it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, you're going to be doing an absolute ton of damage from ranged and absolutely uh, hitting tons of guys. Um, so this is really the piece that you want to go for. Other than that, there's really no mandatory pieces. You really just want to look for gear that has high valor um, and then high uh, precision and proficiency. Those are really the big three for you. Um, valor would be number one. That would definitely be my number one because it affects us in so many different ways. Precision, probably my number two, um, just because flat range damage, very, very good. Um, and then your proficiency, obviously your crit chance and your perk chance, very good. We're going to have really, really high crit chance anyway, as well as automatic crits on our power throws. Um, so you don't have to worry about that too, too much, um, but definitely Valor and Precision. Um, you'll notice here, I, you know, I don't have too much melee and my defense is really not that good. I would definitely want to kind of get more defense on this guy, uh, but you really don't need too, too much defense. He is a little bit of a glass cannon, but because we're playing from range, we don't have to worry about it too much. We're really not in the fight, so to speak, so much. We're not really in the thick of it, um, and we're really kind of throwing those hammers from range and really doing good damage from range. So it's pretty easy for us to, you know, kind of avoid attacks. Um, so Definitely, you know, after you've kind of got, you know, Valor Precision on pretty much everything, you can definitely go for a little bit of Resolve and Resilience. Um, you don't have to. Intensity is okay, too, uh, but definitely avoid Might uh, at all costs. You really don't 
care for mite on any of your uh, pieces. The, the only other piece that can be really good for this build is the belt of the all father but really only if you got it prior to patch 1.3 prior to patch 1.3 you uh would get this piece it would actually have a third perk on it that was uh plus three seconds to your warrior's fury which is your invulnerability for the whole team that perk is absolutely insane um i've been farming like a lunatic uh, after patch 1.3 it actually does not always drop on it you can occasionally just get it to drop with two perks which is absolutely useless i actually just kept this one just for demonstration you can see here so obviously this piece is garbage uh, but if you get it to roll with the third perk as well it can be really powerful um, as well other than that um, you know things that charge your uh, heroics whether honestly all three of your heroics whether it's your ultimate your support or your assault any type of cooldown reduction on the those is absolutely fantastic. Um, I like to use Courageous Inspiration, Willpower Burst when critically injured on my chest. That is an extremely powerful perk, um, especially if you're not a very tanky build. Basically, when you do go to red health, uh, it'll give you kind of your health automatically back, but it's on like a 10 second cooldown. So because we're a ranged build, we can, you know, we can kind of work with that. We can kind of get out of the fight, stay a little safe, uh, and then kind of come back for more. The one thing about this ability, most of the uh, end game stuff, such as hives, uh, mostly of the heroic hives, have modifiers on them that specifically shut down this perk so it's a little annoying um, but it's still a really good perk um, and then the other thing I'm trying to make work I do have this here the binding of the thunderer so this gives guided hammer increases the amount of enemies that could be targeted uh, with Mjolnir by two targets with the manual targeting skill so if you don't know what that is that is the right uh, nope right here it is uh basically you hold down your power throw and you can kind of auto target enemies kind of like captain america's throw does um and then it'll just kind of ricochet against those targets i don't love this skill at, in and of itself just because it reduces or it removes the ability for you to be able to pin enemies you can still pin them with your light attack uh, but with your heavy attack you're not going to be able to pin them it's just going to ricochet around um because we're using high you know high precision high crit on our range throws i feel like this could be good uh to use this exotic with but right now it's been a little shaky um so i'll have to maybe do an update to see if it's really good but it's, it's a little tricky to kind of target it does take a long time so right now i would strongly recommend uh the mjolnir site on the grip of the thunderer this is really the piece that's going to make this build sing uh the other kind of unspoken thing about this build that you know it doesn't really say it in the stats or anything but it actually does play very well, you know, in game is that, you know, when you throw your hammer at someone, it, as you know, it takes that enemy and it moves them about 40 yards back in the fight and it can even pin them to walls. Um, that's extremely valuable. It's not something, you know, that sings on a on a stat sheet here, but it can be extremely useful to your team. You can be knocking out uh, any type of shielded enemy. You could be knocking out riot bots, stiletto riot bots, uh, phase riot bots, anything that's giving your team problems. I mean, you can just send them packing uh, and give your team a lot more breathing room. So just another thing to consider. Uh, again, like I said, it's not something you can really quantify on a stat sheet, but it's an extremely valuable kind of perk that works with Thor here. Um, for your artifacts, this is not anything I have uh, perfected at this point, but definitely high precision, high valor. Um, and if you can get things that reduce the cooldown of your heroic abilities, that would be beautiful. And then for the major artifact, Ring of Nebelung, as usual, the best artifact. Uh, we're going to be wanting to get our things, you know, our, our heroics off cooldown as often as possible. So this this really just does absolutely make it perfect. Um, you can also use the Tacticon for you get a little more might and valor um, and you do a little more with your status effects it's really not as necessary uh, with Thor our our normal ranged attack doesn't do any type of status our power attack does deal bonus shock damage so for single targets like bosses um, you know we definitely want to use that charge up again because we have the automatic crit uh, on the critical throw and 20% more crit damage uh, being able to kind of use a power attack and also put shock damage on that boss is really good um, so can be useful with the tacticon um, but 
for my money, uh, you know, with this build, the Ring of Nebelong, being able to just kind of come back off that Bifrost, uh, hit him with the God Blast, hit him with the Invulnerability more frequently, uh, this is just absolute money to me. So this is what I go with. Um, but otherwise, that's pretty much it for the build. I assure you, it's it's really, really strong uh, from range. You'll see in the gameplay, uh, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, but that's really all I've got for you guys. Definitely give this a try. Again, all you really need is the grip of the Allfather. Just grab this and then just find any pieces. They can be epic. They don't have to be legendary, but anything that gives a lot of valor, which you probably already have with Thor, um, and then a lot of precision, and you'll be able to uh, kind of throw this build together no problem. So I'll leave you with that, uh, give you some gameplay uh, footage. Let me know what you think down in the comments below uh, if you try this build out. But otherwise, that's it for me. Take it easy, guys. Playtime's over, kid! Hey, where did this thing come from? have been the aim team is close by and on alert updating your hut must be defeated.
One of their agents is down. Team are no longer a threat. <laughs> <laughs> 